Welcome to another episode of The Outsender. This episode is just going to cover the difference between six turns of trifilar winding on this uh, 9 to 1 unbalanced to unbalanced transformer compared to seven turns of trifilar windings in order to get the same 9 to 1 transformation ratio. This one has seven turns instead. So in one episode, I think it's uh, in Swedish actually, so I make one of these where it's actually this one that I make and I use six turns and it works well for the HF band but recently I have uh, I've been focusing a lot more on the lower part or the top band part as you would call it you know 160 meters and six turns is not really cutting it so that's what this episode is going to be about <laughs> So you've seen me using this bag, and in this bag I have another transformer that you've also seen in some episodes, which is this green tiger striped thing. I just thought it was a cool idea to make it a little bit, you know, camouflaged like that. And inside I use, it's not exactly the same material as I use here. This is an FT140-61, so it's a, it's a fair right uh, toroid. And this is exactly, it's almost the same type of toroid, but it's a Ferox Cube 4C25, or it's actually, I think it's a Philips, uh, the material is from Philips originally, and they call it 4C25. And they have the same characteristics as the FT14061. So it's the same size and everything. So I just wanted to try this new material and see if, if it uh, if it was similar to the ferrite one, and it is. But I wound this one with seven turns instead. And the reason why I did that was that I wanted more inductance in order to be able to use the 160 meter band more efficiently because the loss in this one is much higher on the 160 meter band compared to if you wind it seven turns. You've also seen me using this one in one of the videos, and this is a 500 ohm resistor. So it's just a bunch of small 3 watt 1000 ohm resistors in parallel and in series in order to get to 500 ohms. And I think that it, this one can swallow about 100 watt of power. So why do I use this one? Well, in combination with this thing and an NFED antenna, I can use this transformer both with an antenna tuning unit, as you would usually use these 91 transformers, or I can use it without an antenna tuning unit by adding the terminating resistor. And well, then I would get a standing wave ratio of uh, below two on at least the, the lower part of HF, which is what I'm interested in here. So the thing about the 6 to 1 material and the 4C25 material is that they are wide band compared to the uh, the 200 T200-2 the 2 material the iron powdered core material and this is a uh, ferrite material so the 61 material and the uh, 4C25 they are all wide band meaning they have a pretty linear transformation ratio across the HF spectrum in this case and compared to how you depending on how you wind it obviously but the main uh, purpose of this one is that it will be a linear transformation ratio 9 to 1 across all of HF and a dash 2 material doesn't provide that. Even if a dash 2 material is low loss and it's probably more low loss than, than this material but it's, uh, it's a marginal difference. But since this one has a linear transformation ratio that means that you can use a terminating resistor to be able to get a pretty good match because well, it's 91, so it's 450 ohms, and this is 500 ohms. The ohm is, is not really that important that it is exact. You will have a lot of stuff that uh, interferes with the exact match, but it's linear across the, the HF spectrum, and that's, uh, that's a good thing then. So that means that I can use a terminating resistor in order to get a match across, well, a large portion of the HF band, at least in the lower part using you know this antenna wire for instance 
And you obviously have to connect the, you know, the antenna wire here, and then you have to have a counterpoise here that goes to ground, and it's the same thing with this one. I have a similar counterpoise, equal length as I have on the, the terminating resistor that goes to ground here. So, well, that's it. Well, I will open this one up and show you how the seven turn 91 transformation ratio is uh, done in this one and what the numbers are. So that's how it looks inside. And I'm using the proper wire, the magnet wire or whatever it's called. And it's, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven turns. The 500 ohm resistor consists of uh, well, it's, uh, it's a total of 32 of these 3 watt resistors. They are 1000 ohms each, which means that the total amount of power that this one can swallow is 96 watts. So the reason behind this construction is that I can use any antenna wire. I just strip any wire and I can just use it like this, like I've done with this one. It's stripped, but then I have you know, wound it back on itself, so it's uh, it's more strength to it. This is like 0.25 millimeter, so it's a pretty thin one, and it's got this uh, uh, aramid uh, core in it. So this wire is from DX wire, so it would be easier by having a you know a plug or something. But that way, I can use any antenna wire in any circumstance. Just just get hold of some wire and strip it and you can use it. And that's the same thing for all of these connectors here then. So I have some numbers here of standing wave ratios when comparing the six turn 91 transformer and the seven turn 91 transformer. So this one would theoretically be, you know, produce more inductance and would be more appropriate for the lower part of HF. And that we can see here that six turns the standing, the lowest frequency that I can achieve with this one, with a standing wave ratio of two, through a 500 ohm resistor is 2.3 megahertz, basically 23, 25 kilohertz, and the same, the same standing wave ratio of 1.98 in this case, with the seven turn I can reach a frequency of one. 0.58 megahertz, 1583 kilohertz. So that means that uh, you know I can reach a lot lower with the same standing wave ratio through this uh, this uh, resistor, and this standing wave ratio of the same frequency of two with this one is 1.47. That means this one is perfectly usable on the same frequency, where this one has two in standing wave ratio. And actually on the 80 meter band here, this one has a standing wave ratio through this resistor of 1.13. That's a pretty good match then. So if you've seen the video where I make this one with six turns, and I recommend six turns for HF to get a good match from 160 meters and up, well now I recommend seven turns instead. And the reason is that, uh, well you see that I got a standing wave ratio of 1.98 at uh, below 1.6 megahertz using the 500 ohm resistor. That means that, yeah, then I can use the whole spectrum and what I'm mainly interested in here is to be able to cover 1.6 megahertz to, well, about 7 megahertz. And it's not about the amateur radio bands primarily. I'm using this type of antenna both for amateur radio and for the military comms that I do, you know, the training comms there basically. And I'm also using this one as a temporary antenna. As signalers, we are supposed to be able to know how to produce or make temporary antennas in the field. So I'm thinking that this will be a thing that I will be bringing along in just in case, basically to have a temporary antenna. But then you may ask, why not just plug in the the antenna wire directly into the transceiver because it basically has that, that you can end fed the antenna tuning unit in that transceiver by just plugging in a wire. Yes, you can do that, but as you know, you know, when you're using di digital modes and uh, a bit more sensitive electronics, then you don't want to have the RF that close to the transceiver and your other equipment. If you end feed an antenna wire, 
just close to the receiver, then the whole you know exterior, the whole box of the transceiver basically becomes the the ground plane or the uh, the artificial ground plane, and obviously the uh, whatever cable you have connected to a computer also becomes part of that ground plane so you can have a lot of rfi problems with your digital communication for instance in your laptop and well we use the same thing we use digital comms now in the army also so that's uh, that's one reason to use a transformer and get the hf further away from you and be able to ground the transformer instead of the transceiver you know, to use a ground plane here and uh, put that in the ground instead. And also use a coax, so you're a bit further away from the from the RF. And then also use a choke at the transceiver. So you don't use the case of the transceiver as your ground plane, basically. And then that way you won't have RFI problems in your computer or whatever. You connect to the transceiver. It's the same thing in amateur radio, so there's no difference there. So that's why I'm thinking that this is a much better option for a temporary or an emergency antenna in my situation. And it's also good for amateur radio. It will cover all the bands, you know, so that's good, even without an automatic tuning unit. Or if you want more efficiency, you just uh, remove the, the resistor and use the 91 transformer as an end-fed random wire or long wire type of antenna and have a very efficient system there. So that's just my, my tips for this video. And uh, well, thanks for watching and give this uh, video a thumbs up if you like it and consider subscribing and hitting the little bell down there if you want notifications when, when there's another video. And please consider becoming a Patreon at www.patreon.com slash outsender. And then you will become a member of the Discord community automatically where you will have access to the outsender discord server as a patreon member and uh, we can do further discussions on the patreon on the Dis discord community there so well for that's it for this uh, episode of the outsender and as i always say 73 end of message out